good afternoon, everybody. We'll call today's meeting to order. Uh, welcome and welcome our friends here from uh, Rogers today who are once again doing a quarterly meeting and uh, we appreciate uh, their involvement and interest and uh, being with us. The very first thing today uh, will be to accept a motion on the agenda as it has been presented in front of you. It is moved by Councillor Tessie, you're seconded by Deputy Mayor Locke. There are additions. Uh, I'm a, are there any others other than the ones that I see outside of the actual uh, kit itself today? There are only three. Any other additions? If not, I'll call it all in favor. Contrary minded motion uh, is carried. Uh, the next item on the agenda would be our uh, minutes, and these would be the minutes from our meeting of June 1. Uh, and I'm uh, prepared to accept a motion that they be accepted as presented. Moved by Councillor Stoyle, seconded by uh, Councillor Walsh. Are there any errors or omissions? Any errors or omissions from the minutes of June 1st, 2010? From the minutes or from the action report attached? Errors or omissions? Hearing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor? Contrary minded motion is carried. Business arising from the minutes uh, of June 1st, 2010. Business arising, Councillor Stoyles. Uh, 393, Your Worship. The 393? Brain, yeah, the Brain Injuries Association were in, of course, and did a proclamation. And Mr. Losh dropped out pledge sheets to me. They have the walk scheduled for June 29th, and it's a provincial walk. And right. I'm going to give them, it's, made, it's June 27th, and it's 2 to 5, and it's uh, in St. John's, but it's a provincial walk, and he dropped out pledge sheets to me and I will pass them on to Mona Lewis and anybody interested in walking in this area in Mount Pearl then contact me or contact City Sure Council. you're going to walk for us aren't you? I'm going to walk yes sure, I Sure we'll make pledges to you. Thank you. There you go. What do you think? Quarter each guys? Other members of the public can come in. 25 cents? <laughs> no? You want to go higher? Yeah I got a feeling they're going to go higher. We'll, we'll do a little better than 25 cents there Councillor Stoss. Councillor Aker. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Worship. I'm looking at uh, item number 423, the speeding on Jersey Avenue. I got another email this morning, uh, basically wondering what the status was with speed bumps, and I'm not sure exactly we're going down the road towards speed bumps, but uh, the resident reiterated to me how the speeding continues to be, uh, be a concern. I didn't know if the Director of Infrastructure and Public Works uh, could give us a status, uh, perhaps Scott or Councillor Tessier. Councillor Tessier. Thank you. Um, at committee level, we did discuss this issue. There's a lot of concerns around speed humps and speed bumps. And while they may seem like uh, an easy, quick fix or a good solution for speeding problems, there have been concerns with uh, emergency vehicles and delays for emergency vehicles and certainly risk to people who might be actually be in, for, any, for example, an ambulance. Also, there are snow clearing implications, uh, even with speed humps as opposed to bumps. That's not to say that it's thrown out, but what we're looking at doing first is an enforcement. We're making it an enforcement issue. Uh, we wanted to track the amount of traffic that is on Jersey Avenue, the, the amount of traffic that's speeding, when they're speeding, notify our municipal enforcement and our RNC officers to let them know if you see people going 12 over, over 12, uh, 12 kilometers over the speed limit, it's a ticketable offense, and we will be deticketing them, and we were referring it actually to community services to have a look at as well, so I'm not sure if Mr. Osmond has anything else to add. Mr. Osmond, anything to add to that? I assume the enforcement plan, <coughs> the strategy to put a, to put a, a radar out there and uh, a police officer with a, with a ticketing book, I'm imagining that plan is, is in the works. That's correct, Your Worship. We've, uh, we have uh, stepped up some patrol in that area. We, we have issued tickets. Uh, in the last few days, and we'll continue to do so. More to come. We'll be there as uh, much as possible, and uh, where the speed exceeds that acceptable, then we will be ticketing. And not just there, uh, Your Worship, uh, we've ticketed quite a few uh, people in violation over the last few days, so you're going to see an increase in our, uh, our officers giving out a few more tickets. Why would, the, why would the speed on Jersey, which, you know, is very much a residential street, why would the speed there be excessive? And why does there appear to be, based on uh, what I hear from the traffic calming circumstance, there appears to be a lot of traffic on the street. Is, is, has Jersey become a shortcut? It has. I think so. yes. That's basically what's happened here. Uh, so we're going to uh, we're gonna have to lay it on the line on, on the point of view of enforcement. Okay. Anything further to add to that, uh, Councillor Aker? No, thank you, Your Worship. Okay. Any other business arising? 
Other business arising, going once. Twice. Okay, we're moving on. Uh, the next item for us on our agenda today is proclamations. We do have one today. We have a proclamation that we are going to sign and put in uh, to the record today. And it is in reference to uh, June being recreation month. And I'm going to read it into the record and then I'm going to invite uh, the chair of our community services uh, recreation group, uh, Councillor Walsh, is going to uh, actually address this. I won't go through all of the whereas's. I've picked out a couple of them that will, I think, suffice to give us the tenor of what is uh, planned. Whereas in the city of Mount Pearl, we are fortunate to have a variety of recreation and park systems <coughs> providing countless recreational opportunities for residents and visitors from around the world. And whereas recreation enhances quality of life, active living, and lifelong learning, and helps people live happier and longer, develops skills and positive self-image in children and youth, develops creativity, and builds healthy bodies and positive lifestyles. And whereas the benefits provided by recreation and park programs and services reduce health care and social services costs, serve to boost the economy, economic renewal, and sustainability, enhance property values, attract new business, increase tourism and curb employee absenteeism. And whereas all levels of government, the voluntary sector and private enterprise throughout the province participate in the planning, development and operation of recreation and parks programs, services and facilities, now therefore be it resolved that the city of Mount Pearl does hereby proclaim that June, which witnesses the greening of Newfoundland and Labrador and serves as a significant gateway to family activities, has been designated as Recreation Month which will annually recognize and celebrate the benefits derived year-round from quality public and private recreation and parks resources at the local, regional, and provincial levels. Therefore, our community, in recognition of the benefits and values that recreation parks and leisure services provide, to hereby designate the month of June as Recreation Month in the City of Mount Pearl, and I'm going to invite Councillor Walsh to address uh, exactly what Recreation Month is going to be about. Councillor? Well, thank you very much, Your Worship. Uh, in terms of the, the provincial perspective, of course, they have established their own program of events. And June, as you've so rightly said, is really a month where they just, at the beginning of summer, take an opportunity to highlight what is a, a year-long program of activities. In Mount Pearl, Your Worship, obviously, we have a great deal to celebrate and perhaps even more to be grateful for. We have some of the, the best uh, and finest recreational facilities and programs, uh, not only in the province, but probably throughout the entire country. Uh, two of the particular facilities that I want to highlight, the Team Guju Complex and uh, the Pearl Gate uh, Recreation Complex, these two facilities in particular, once they're completed, and they're both in the final stages of completion, will be among the very, very best, as you well know, in the entire country. People who go down to Team Guju Complex now just marvel at the facility, the size of it, and the, the uh, diversity of the facilities that exist there. So we're pretty proud of that. Uh, in addition to that, Your Worship, of course, I, I want to mention the fact that we have a unique kind of concept for recreation, particularly for minor sport in the city of Mount Pearl, in the form of the Sport Alliance. That's, that's unique to the point where it's being emulated uh, throughout the country. We continue to get requests as to how this is done. It is an umbrella uh, uh, group for minor sport uh, in the city. Uh, but what <coughs> really brings it all together, and I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, finish with this, are two things. First of all, a tremendous staff in the city of Mount Pearl, and I'd ask our director, Ray Osmond, uh, to extend, a, again, our continued appreciation to your staff, Ray, for the outstanding job that they do throughout the course of the year. But what makes the programs run uh, more, than, more than anything else uh, are the tremendous group of volunteers. Uh, all of the members of council, in one form or another, have been part of a large volunteer sector. Much of the volunteer sector, of course, because of our children, focuses around recreation and youth. Uh, there was a time when recreation in our cities was pretty much equated with programs provided for youth. That's no longer the case. We all know that the demographics in this city, and the province across the country, have changed tremendously. So as far as recreation and community uh, activities are concerned, we have to be much more uh, cities for all ages, and that's what our recreation programs are really all about. I saw a kind of an interesting brochure a short while ago, and I don't mention this because I'm there myself now, but it was a senior who was actually on the front page of a glossy magazine down uh, doing push-ups and looking up into a camera saying, if you call me a senior, you no longer get my business. 
that's the reality of our baby boomers. That's mm -hmm. the reality of our world. That's the reality of our recreation programs and, and our community development. So we have to be tuned into that in terms of recreation. It's not only about youth. We continue to extend tremendous programs for our youth, but it's really communities for all ages now. Mm -hmm. So our recreations have to be, our recreation programs have to be extended and, and inclusive to all ages, all groups, all abilities, and people with disabilities. And, and that's what this month is really all about. And thank you for the opportunity to highlight it. Wonderful, thank you very much. Anybody else with a comment, question? We will move along. Uh, under correspondence, just one really piece of correspondence today, and it is from uh, the Honorable Member for the District of Mount Pearl North, Steve Canton, basically passing along and extending congratulations to the City of Mount Pearl on being selected as the winner in the Municipality or Regional Waste Management Committee category for the 21st Annual Newfoundland and Labrador Environmental Awards. It was a, a great accomplishment, as he points out, and. Uh, uh, yours truly had the uh, honor of representing the city at that awards luncheon and accepting uh, the award on behalf uh, of the city. Uh, we continue to be a front runner when it comes to, I'd like to think, all things green. Uh, and obviously our commitment to continue in that uh, will carry on. So we thank uh, the honorable member for uh, his kind comments. Moving along, committee reports. Uh, first committee report today. Our Public Works Committee, Councillor Tessier, the floor is yours. Thank you, Your Worship. The first item on our agenda is uh, that we received a letter from the Royal Canadian Legion requesting permission to hold their annual parade in their wreath laying ceremony on Thursday, July 1st. Uh, of course, we're recommending approval be granted. The parade route will go from Church of the Ascension on Smallwood Drive down to Park Avenue, and then, of course, down to the War Memorial at the epitaph, uh, the epitaph of the War Memorial. And this is the 94th anniversary of the Battle of Beaumont Hamill. So the city wants to acknowledge, of course, the sacrifices that were made by those who served our country to preserve our rights and our freedoms and give us, of course, the freedom that we enjoy today. So we are definitely recommending approval for that, and I so move. It is uh, moved by Councillor Tessier, seconded by Councillor Walsh. All those in favor, contrary minded, motions carried. Tenders were called for the supply and the delivery of our winter road salt with bids received from the following that are listed. That's A. Harvey and Company and Avalon Coal and Salt. We're recommending that the tender be awarded to the lowest qualified bidder, which is Avalon Coal and Salt for 95, 95.21 a metric ton, and I so move. It is moved, seconded by Councillor Walsh, $95.21 a metric ton for salt. Uh, how does that compare to last year? Do, do we know our prices it's up that same. high? Mr. Lush? Not much yes, Your Worship, it was 93.77, so it's up a dollar twenty-five. So about a dollar twenty-five a ton yeah. from last year. Okay. Any question or comment? How much will we get this year? How many tons? What do you think? Twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand tons. Gosh, and I hope that I hope that next March we've got twenty-four thousand tons left in the bank. Don't want to use a bit. Gosh. And not All because not because we're stingy, but because we didn't need it. All those in favor. Contrary-minded motion is carried. You know I've jinxed us now, right? Yes, you have. Yes, sorry. I fear so. My apologies in advance. Next item, quotations were called for the supply and the installation of chain link fencing along the walkway of McCarthy Crescent and the side parallel to the tennis courts on Westminster Drive. Uh, of course, the uh, quotations are there as follows. A provision for this amount uh, was included in the capital budget uh, for 2010, and the committee recommends that the quotation be awarded to the sole bidder, Provincial Fence Products, for a total price of $6,850 plus HST, and I so move. Moved and seconded by Councillor Walsh. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded, motions carried. Next item, Your Worship, uh, tenders were called for the supply and the delivery of a commingle compactor. Tender documents were picked up by three companies with a bid received from only one supplier as follows, and that's Saunders Equipment. We're recommending that the tender be awarded to Saunders Equipment with the options as outlined above for a total tendered price of $285,979.27, and I so move. Moved, seconded. Question on this. I'm seeing option A, option B, option C, option D. Can you explain to me uh, these options? One of them say configuration, no automated arm. Another one says configuration with automated arm. Uh, where are we going here? Is this, uh, is this not going to be one of the new this fangled is machines that will have the automated arm that we will be able to do the, uh, uh, at this, the more at this point technical we're still, collections? At this point, we're still waiting on potential funding for that system. So as it stands now, this is coming without the automated arm because we don't have confirmation either way. However, it can be retrofitted. So this is option A. This is, I guess, option A. Yes. Is that correct? 
This is option A. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So again, it can be it can be retrofit with the uh, with the arm on it. Anybody have any question or comment? Any other questions on this? Hearing none, we'll call it. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. Motion is, is carried. That concludes uh, public works. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Tessier. Moving along, Community Services Committee report. Councillor Walsh, back on your feet again, sir. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Um, as you're well aware, we have a number of service groups within the city that have contracts uh, and agreements with the St. John Ambulance, who provide tremendous service uh, to the city, particularly our sports groups again, but a lot of different organizations we as a city have an agreement that covers four specific activities uh, in the city and for, for that uh, as part of that memorandum of understanding we have uh, we contribute for uh, sorry two thousand dollars I guess they wish it was for uh, but two thousand dollars to the St. John ambulance um, and we have not paid that uh, for 2009 your worship so right now we'd like to make a motion uh, to look after that the payment of the two thousand dollars to St. John ambulance I will mention as well, we, we do uh, have a request from St. John Ambulance to consider the amount and to enter into a new agreement, and we have extended an invitation for them to do that, to come in and speak with us, provide us some information, some rationale in terms of uh, why they would need an increase in funding for this. And of course, we, we do value and appreciate the support and the service they provide. So that's something uh, that's coming in the future. <clears throat> this one covers the existing agreement, and it will be the payment of the $2,000, and I so move. Moved by Councillor Walsh, seconded by Deputy Mayor Locke. I am assuming, Councillor Walsh, that that would become a budgetary item for us next fall. It is and has been and included in our budget for the last number of years. Actually. Uh, okay. Yep. Anybody else with a question or comment? Yes, sure. uh, Councillor Stoyles? So they don't have a contract in place or an MOU in place for 2009 or 2010. So we're not going to look at it until our next budget, which is be for 2011. So would we look at giving them the amount for 2010 as well today? Or uh, I believe, is I that a typo? This, this that's a, that is no, 2010, no, 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 isn't that's, it? that's correct, Your Worship. If I could just answer the question. Oh, the, go ahead. The go ahead, question. Councilor Walsh. Uh, yeah, we, we had an agreement, uh, a standing agreement for $2,000 uh, per year. Right. Uh, the St. John Ambulance, particularly uh, as it relates to the operation of their mobile unit, because yeah. I think there are a significant number of expenses that have been incurred with the operation of that. Of course, that was a great asset that was contributed, I think, through the Tim Hortons uh, program. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, with that comes expenses, repairs, gas, and all kinds of other things. So in relation to that, they've asked for uh, you know, consideration for expenses related to the, the vehicle, and I guess part and parcel of that, an increase in funding. Uh, for 2009, we're providing the $2,000, which was part of the regular memorandum of understanding. What we have done is extended invitation for the for Carol and her staff to come in, talk to us about the needs for the ambulance. We are open to supporting that and increasing uh, that amount. But of course, we need to hear specifically what they are. We just don't want to allocate uh, taxpayers' dollars unless there is a proper rationale So this would provided. be for 2010. <clears throat> this would be for 2010, correct. So what we're allocating now, it's not an error, it's correct. This is our payment for 2009, which hasn't been paid. Hmm. Okay. And Councillor Stoyles, what was the point well, you were making well, again, now that I understand that? The point I was making, I was wondering if, you know, because we're going to look at it as a budget item, I'm assuming we won't be discussing it until the budget for 2011. That's what I was wondering about the payment for 2010. Uh, would, we guess, be, would we be better off giving them both 9 and 10 now? Well, no, I, I don't. I mean, if, if there's a chance of giving them some else or listen to what they have to say for 2010 I'm quite willing to listen to what they have to say if but if there's no money in our budget to give them I guess we can bring it back in again and, and give them I got a feeling we're gonna I got a feeling we're gonna be hearing from the Community Services Committee after a meeting with these people about the 2010 award is that the that's, thinking that's um, and again uh, if, if uh, you look through your uh, committee meeting uh, uh, agenda for this evening that's on our agenda for this evening uh, there's a reason we're doing it this way, Your Worship. I'd ask for the, you know, the, the trust of council in, mm -hmm. in, in continuing with this. This is a payment for 2009. We are open to discussion on a new memorandum of understanding for 2010, uh, and that will be discussed in committee and brought forward at a, at a subsequent meeting of council. Okay. Uh, it does entail, of course, an increase, and that is a budgetary item. We're open to increasing it, and we are open to working with the John Ambulance people and we've been invited them to come in and talk to us, and we're gonna share some of that information with the uh, council tonight in committee. So if that's Thank okay. Thank you very much. Any other question or comment? 
It has been moved and seconded by the Deputy Mayor. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded, the motion is carried. Thank you so much, Your Worship, and members of Council. Uh, we have a couple of quotations for audiovisual uh, equipment and the provision of service to support our city days. And of course, this year, as we are all aware, we're pretty excited about it. In fact, the city days is an expanded agenda that incorporates uh, what well, was the east west and now is the east west north. The first was harder, uh, hard enough to say. This is even more challenging. Uh, but that's going to be an expanded program. And again, it's something that we're going to discuss and share with the uh, council in committee this evening. But uh, we wanted to let the uh, tenders uh, out. And of course, we received two bids on the tender, one uh, from Atlantic Audio and the uh, other from Eastern Audio. The low bidder was Atlantic. And we're recommending that that bid be provided uh, to them for 11819 uh, and I so move. So moved by Councillor Wall, seconded by Deputy Mayor Locke. This includes uh, your worship all taxes. And this by is way. inclusive of all taxes. Any question or comment? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion is carried. We provide, again, as Council is fully aware, an operational grant to Admiralty House and Museum, uh, and uh, they are asking for the second installment. Uh, of that grant, uh, and that second installment consists of $18,750. This year as well, Your Worship, uh, we've extrapolated the groundskeeping piece of that, and uh, as a result of that, that was in our regular uh, community service department, right. uh, but that is really a dedicated service for the outside of the Admiralty House Museum, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm happy to say, actually, and should, should mention it, it's actually a program that we have sponsored through Visions, which is a, a tremendous employer, uh, and uh, the, the gentleman who's been doing the work there has been doing fabulous work. Um, so that's an additional 10,300. So I'm asking for the leave of council to support both requests and uh, I so move. It is moved and seconded. Uh, this will represent two uh, financial contributions to Admiralty House, one for 18,750, as well as an additional release of $10,300 for staff costs relating to ground maintenance. Uh, any question or comment from anybody? Hearing none, we'll call it. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion is carried. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a couple of information pieces. We have received funding from the Celebrate Canada program that supports the program and activities that we put off for uh, Canada Day. Of course, of course, we as a city uh, contribute significantly more than this, but we are grateful for the $1,400 that comes through that program. We have a full day of events and activities mm -hmm. planned this year uh, for uh, Canada Day uh, on uh, July 1st, and we invite the public and uh, to come out again en masse to support and celebrate this uh, tremendous country we have. We also have a SWASP grant uh, that covers one position for a, an eight-week period, and again, we're, uh, we're grateful to Human Resources and Labor and Employment uh, for that as well. The last uh, couple of items, one that's in our kit, the other is outside, I'll deal with uh, in just a few minutes. Uh, we unfortunately, uh, Your Worship, have to close the pool uh, for a couple of days. We're proposing the 28th and the 29th of June. We have to effect some report, uh, repairs sorry, on the roof. Uh, the, the roof has some structural damage uh, that's obviously compromising the integrity of the pool and uh, we're getting some water into the area has to be addressed, unfortunately, as you know, and all members of the council and the public are well aware, we're well advanced in plans to build an entirely new uh, recreation facility that includes a beautiful pool. So we're reticent to spend any money. This is absolutely essential. So uh, I think the cost is about $13,000 with tax in. Uh, we're gonna close it for two days, uh, carry out those repairs, and I just uh, beg the indulgence and the uh, patience of, of the public who, uh, who use that uh, facility and uh, thank them for the cooperation and understanding as we carry out those repairs. Uh, finally, uh, we just mentioned uh, Recreation Month, uh, the month of June. As part of the Newfoundland and Labrador Aware Award winners uh, announcement, uh, which took place on June 12th, we had two uh, Mount Pearl uh, winners. One, an individual uh, well known to all of us, Gerard Philpot is the facility maintenance supervisor with the city. And he was named the winner of the Cy Hoskins Memorial Award. Now, this award is presented to a full-time recreation practitioner uh, who's made a significant contribution to the growth and development of parks, recreation, and leisure services. We all know Gerard uh, very, very well, and we know of his work. Uh, it's great 
that the province and that the uh, provincial organization also recognizes the tremendous achievements and the stellar uh, work of uh, Gerard Philpott. So allow me on behalf of all council, your worship, to extend a hearty congratulations to Gerard. He's a very deserving and worthy recipient and he's a tremendous employee of the city and here. we appreciate his work. Here, here. Um, <clears throat> the second winner uh, of recognition uh, goes to the Mount Pearl Special Olympics. These Olympians are special in more ways than one, I can tell you. They won the Bridging the Gap Award that goes to volunteers who've made a significant contribution to the development of recreation for persons with a disability. Uh, I don't want to start naming names with the Special Olympics, but I can tell you they have a small army of volunteers. The, the, uh, the people in this community who come forward and work on behalf of the Special Olympic program in Mount Pearl are incredibly generous, extremely well organized, and are a, a an, um, I, I can't, actually words can hardly describe the amount of support that they give. We know that we hosted the Special Olympic Games, uh, was it last year? Yeah, and of course that was so well received by these uh, athletes throughout. This program is incredibly valuable, Your Worship, and uh, I think, again, that Recreation Newfoundland recognize the, the program here in Mount Pearl, and particularly the young people and the parents and volunteers who give so much to make it successful. Absolutely. Again, we extend hearty congratulations to them. Very, very, very well deserved. Thank you. That's it for community service. Thanks. Thank you, sir, very much. And we all share uh, in the, in those comments and congratulations to Mr. Philpott and to Special Olympics for uh, outstanding outstanding community service. It, uh, Mount Pearl Special Olympics is well known uh, for uh, their their vigor, and obviously this is a worthy recognition for them as well. Uh, we're moving on. Our next committee is Corporate Services. Uh, uh, Councillor Paul Lane not with us today. Unfortunately, he's ill. Uh, we uh, we send him our best and hope that he'll be back in his seat and on the job real quick because between now and then, Councillor Tessier gets to do these tasks for him. Councillor Tessier. Thank you, Your Worship. My understanding is that Councillor Lane can barely speak and that I would actually like to hear. I'm is not sure right? I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> could you, could you hear it? Could you possibly hear it? Now, I'm not sure I believe it. That's you're not sure you believe it? None of us really are sure that he, what, he really can't talk? That's the understanding. This would be a great day for him to be at council. Charmaine must be delighted. His wife is delighted, yeah. Let's uh, move on. I will Give ask him a council. Hard time. He can't defend himself. I'll ask council to refer to the actual pink copy because there, it's an amended uh, corporate services agenda. Okay. First item of the committee is recommending approval to exempt the 2010 business taxes in accordance with our policy for charitable and nonprofit organizations as follows, and that's for the safety services of Newfoundland and Labrador and the Terry Fox Foundation. Uh, the amounts are listed, $2,531.17 for safety services and $505.36 for the Terry Fox Foundation. And it is my understanding that both of these businesses are new to Mount Pearl, is that right? We're delighted to have them. So I, I move that this be accepted. Moved by Councillor Tessier, seconded by Councillor Stoyles. All those in favor, contrary minded, motion carried. The committee is recommending approval to defer taxes in the amount of $1,017.50 for the roll number that's listed in accordance with council's policy for low income earners and I so move. Moved, seconded by Councillor Stoyles. All in favor? Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. It should be noted that this is a deferral, this is not an exemption. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have uh, four donation requests. If it pleases council, uh, we could probably move all four at once. We'll list them individually, but move all four at once, if that's are there, okay. Are, they all, are, are all of them recommended for support? My understanding is that they are. That would be an important piece Here. if we're going to move one motion. Okay. Uh, the first item is St. Peter's Parish 14th Annual Golf Tournament. We're recommending approval to provide a $100 donation in support of this golf tournament, which is being held on July 12th right. uh, of this year. We uh, are recommending uh, approval for a donation for the Mount Pearl members of the Newfoundland and Labrador Boys Under 16 Provincial Soccer Team. They're going to be attending the national tournament in Quebec. We have three Mount Pearl players, Matthew Noseworthy, Evan Royal, and Nick Noseworthy uh, playing on this team. And those boys must be some exceptional hockey or hockey, that's a Freudian slip now, isn't it? Soccer players, because we see their names uh, quite often when it comes to elite sport, elite soccer especially. We're rec recommending entering a team at a cost of $500 in the annual Sport Alliance Golf Tournament taking place on July 15th. That's going to be held at the Admiral's Green Golf Course. And of course, recommending uh, providing a $100 donation in support of the law enforcement torch run for the Newfoundland and Labrador Special Olympics. They actually visited City Hall here on Friday past. Our staff did a fabulous job of welcoming them. 
and uh, the deputy mayor certainly uh, represented us well uh, at that event. So I move that these uh, that these donations be approved. Moved and seconded. Uh, the four items uh, are as listed. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded? Motion is carried. Move the invoices for approval. Items listed one through seven. Invoices for approval moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Uh, the committee is recommending that the May 2010 payment register totaling $2,158,533.43 be approved as presented. Moved, seconded, all in favor? Contrary minded, motion carried. And the last item, Your Worship, is the government cast gas tax funding agreement. This is more of an administration thing. The committee has been advised that the local government gas tax funding agreement has been amended with a few changes. The project completion date for the first round of funding has been extended from March 31st, 2010 to March 31st, 2015. As well, beginning in 2011, the filing date of the annual expenditure report will be March 31st instead of June 30th. Also beginning in 2011, annual training in the administration of gas tax agreement will be mandatory for each municipality and must include one representative from administration and one elected official. And the most significant of the amendments is the one allowing municipalities to use their gas tax funds as their share of municipal infrastructure projects with improved drinking water quality, improved wa wastewater quality, or projects in municipalities undertaking regional cooperative, uh, cooperation initiatives. And I guess what that means is that the gas tax can now be combined with multi-year funding, which mm -hmm. it could not be done before. Right. And I guess the reason for this extension, it doesn't really apply to us because, well, we have our projects done, but the reason for this extension was primarily for smaller communities who had trouble uh, identifying projects that fit the criteria and the timeline for to, to access their gas tax. Uh, so the committee is recommending the amended government gas tax funding agreement be executed for the mayor and the CAO's signature, and I so move. Moved and seconded. Any question? Any comment? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, I just want to take a moment as well to thank the provincial government on behalf of the, the municipalities who, who require this extension because this will allow them to complete some necessary infrastructure projects in their community. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the provincial government for doing that, and I so move. It is uh, moved and seconded. All in favor? Contrary-minded motion is carried. Councillor Tessier, item number six in the report referencing interim financing. Are we? It's going to be done this. Deferred. It's being deferred, is it? Yes. This is, is it going to be deferred? Yeah, deferred. Oh, okay. No, no so that concludes the report. Uh, we'll move on. Engineering Services, uh, Councillor Aker. Thank you, Your Worship. A couple of items. The, uh, the first is the 2010 street upgrading. Uh, this is contract package two. We have the tender results in. Uh, bids range, there's three bids. They range from $1.463 million to $1.614 million. The low bidder was Modern Paving. Uh, currently, our, uh, our consultants are still reviewing them, but uh, we're asking council tonight if we could approve the awarding of the, um, of the tender to Modern Paving in the amount of $1,463,674, uh, HST included, subject to confirmation from our consultants and approval of the Department of Municipal Affairs that this amount, or this, the tender specs are all, the, the bids are all in order. It is moved by Councillor Aker, seconded by Councillor Stalls. One quick question for you. We were going to put the streets that are under this paving program. We were actually going to list them and put them on the on the website. Have we done that? I haven't gone in to look. They're not on the website. They're not on the website. The yeah. Mr. Lush says yes, they are. They are. Mr. Aker doesn't know what he's talking My about. Apologies. I checked today. And I couldn't find them. I spread that to the website. When was it updated? <laughs> Dinner time today. Lunch time today. All right. So he got you. That's all. So the incoming mail. So. We also yeah, awarded CP1 two weeks ago at, at their most recent public meeting. All the right. streets on CP1 for upgrading are Ashford Drive, Blanford Place, Edwards Place, Morris Drive, Sampson Street, and Whiteley Drive. And Whitley Drive. And the contract package we just awarded or yeah, got approved CP2. Award, CP2 was Frobisher Avenue, Jeffers Drive, Montclair Street, Orchard Avenue, Hector Place, Schreier Crescent, Santa Crescent, and Whalen Avenue. That's it. Thank you, sir. We'll call the question. All those in favor? Okay. Contrary minded, motion is carried. The, uh, the second item there is for, uh, it's a request for release of partial security related to Mount Carson Terrace Phase 2. Uh, the developer is uh, Donovan Holmes. As you can see from the kit, there's three areas of uh, outstanding deficiencies that are still outstanding. Uh, um, the biggest one is number two, where it talks about a bank area located on the south side of Dunluce has to be... Uh, has to be upgraded or basically some more hydro seating applied to it. 
Um, smaller items in the deficiency list include the pole brace at the rear of the 12 dome moose has to be removed and we need to get some drawings updated as it relates to the storm pipe location at the rear of 12 dome moose. Uh, currently we hold $45,000 in security and the motion is to reduce that security level to $10,000 and I so move. So we would release 35 them from a, a 35 we would uh, there is still incentive uh, the developer the cost is estimated to be about seven to eight thousand dollars of what needs to be done to satisfy these, so these there's a bit of incentive to, I got you. Uh, to ensure it gets done i got you moved by council raker seconded by council stoyles any question or comment from council hearing none all those in favor contrary minded motion is carried that's it your worship thank you and that concludes your report we're moving on to planning and land use deputy mayor lock if you would thank you your worship <coughs> Our first item here today has to do with Mount Pearl Municipal Plan Amendment Number 77, 2010, and Development Regulations Amendment Number 200, 2010, involving the redesignation and rezoning amendment uh, with respect to 5 Centennial Street. The committee is advised that this amendment has received provincial release and is now ready for council adoption. Uh, this amendment, Your Worship, is uh, a result of an application that we had from uh, Mr. Wilkins, who is the owner. And uh, and the, of the property and operator of Wilkins Automotive Repairs uh, to redesignate and rezone the property at 5 Centennial Street. And this was uh, to uh, accommodate the application to extend the, the operation here, to build on some additional bays onto this particular uh, repair facility. And uh, as such, in order to facilitate this, uh, the amendment was, was necessary. The amendment consists of an amendment to our municipal plan that will redesignate the property at 5 Centennial Street from city center to mixed use. And those lands that are not being redesignated uh, shall maintain their present, present designation. Mm -hmm. The amendment will also involve an amendment to the Mount Pearl Development Regulations to rezone 5 Centennial Street from commercial general to mixed development. And again, those lands not being rezoned will maintain their present zoning. The Development Regulation Amendment supports and implements the planned amendment. As such, our committee, the Planning and Land Use Development Committee, is recommending the following actions. First, that Council adopt Mount Pearl Municipal Plan Amendment Number 77, 2010, mm -hmm. and Development Regulations Amendment Number uh, 200, 2010, both pertaining to 5 Centennial Street. Secondly, that George Trainer uh, be appointed as Commissioner for the Public Hearing. And the third, that the Public Hearing be scheduled for July 6, 2010, at 7 p.m. at Mount Pearl City Hall. And I so move. Moved by Deputy Mayor Locke, seconded by Councillor Aker. Any question or comment on this? Councillor Walsh. A brief comment, Your, your Worship. Uh, I understand that we went through the public consultation process with this. I think this commission hearing is really because we're doing a, an amendment to our municipal plan only. Correct. So uh, I believe from Mr. Wilkins and other people's perspective, there's really no uh, outstanding opposition to this. In fact, I don't believe we had a single representation no. from the public. We did uh, circulate uh, information to all residents within 150 meters, as is our standard practice, uh, placed it in the media, et cetera. So I think what we're doing here is going through the, the regular process, and hopefully we'll be able to satisfy the needs of the bureaucracy with this hearing uh, in early July and move on with the development. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, all you Councilor Walsh. Question then. All those in favor? Contrary minded, motion is carried. Uh, the second item here, Worship, is a recommendation for an order with respect to some damaged landscaping at 46 Wellington Crescent. Our committee was advised that there's a damaged landscaping at this particular address, and this matter arose from a complaint that was received back in October of 2008. And since that time, there's been a history of the city's efforts in attempting to have this deficiency corrected through you know, the Technical Services Committee, municipal enforcement, notices, uh, et cetera. The necessary, necessary repairs have not been carried out to date, despite the numerous requests to do so. The lead hand reviewed the lengthy chronology of the matter, and as a result of the inaction to date, the department is recommending that an order be issued to have the landscaping repaired. Um, this is not just um, one incident here. This has been a common complaint that we've been receiving over the past uh, number of months, actually, with the, the melting of the snow, people parking on their landscape lots and mm -hmm. the associated mud and debris and the, uh, you know, the aesthetic, uh, you know, it just, it just doesn't look the part. So again, this is not uh, a standalone case here. In any event, uh, the committee concurred with the recommendation of our department, and as such, our committee is recommending that an order to repair the damaged landscaping be issued to the property owner of 46 Wellington Crescent, and I so move. Moved and seconded by Councillor Aker. Uh, question or comment? Council 
Counselor Stoyles. I'm just wondering, Your Worship, if this is a rental property, if we know if it's a rental property, because I know over the years, both Councillor Lane and myself have complained about rental properties, and I understood that this was a rental property. Uh, I would imagine it is, yeah. Is that the case? Do you know, Deputy I'm Mayor? I'm not sure. Is it, is it rental? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We don't really know, but uh, I would speculate you're correct, Councillor Stoltz. Mm -hmm. uh, any other questions or comment? Well, Councillor Tessier? If I may, that brings a good point you know, to the surface again. It doesn't matter if it's a rental or if it's not. It does if not. You, if you own the property, you must maintain it. If you live there, you probably stand a greater likelihood of maintaining it because you look at it every day. But if you don't live there, somebody else has to look at it every mm -hmm. day. So whether you own it or not, you have to maintain your property. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that does not lessen at all the requirement for this order. Uh, we'll call it then. All those in favor, contrary-minded, motion is carried. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. The uh, next item here uh, involves new building and site development, a discretionary use application uh, for 8 Thomas Byrne Drive. We received an application from Summit Builders Limited on behalf of St. John Ambulance uh, to construct a new building, 994 square meters, two-story building, and associated site development, again, at uh, 8 Thomas Drive, Thomas Byrne Drive. And this will involve both a combined office use as well as a training center for St. John's Am Ambulance. Uh, it's quite a nice facility. The, uh, the plans are in your kit there, so you can have a look through it. So we're delighted to uh, have the opportunity to have this in our city. Um, the lead hand reviewed the following background information um, as was outlined in our uh, de department report. And uh, the, it's, it's zoned light industrial. The proposed office and educational uh, uses at uh, 8 Thomas Byrne Drive um, constitute a nice buffering uh, uses between the industrial and commer commercial uses in the park and the existing residential use uh, just to the south of this particular property. The proposed office use is permitted, is a permitted use in the light industrial land use zone. However, the proposed educational use is within a range of uses that may be permitted at the discretion of council. As such, because it's a discretionary use, the application was processed in accordance with condition four of the light industrial use zone table and regulations 22 and 91 of the Mount Pearl Development Regulations that required public notification. Uh, a, not a notice of the application was published in the Telegram, which again is, is standard procedure on April 24th. Um, the information was also circulated, Your Worship, to the 48 uh, property owners and business owners, again within the 150 meter radius. Uh, our MHA was contacted, the Chamber of Commerce was contacted, it was placed on our website, and uh, the briefing session was scheduled for May 12, 2010. However, the city did not receive any representation um, in terms of a response to the public notice and as such, uh, the briefing session was canceled. Outlined as well, there you have in your kit, um, the commentary for both external and internal. So they're all outlined there. Yep. Um, the Planning and Development Department has no objection to the construction of this two-story building and the associated site developments. And as such, the Planning and Land Use Development Committee is recommending approval and issuance of a conditional development permit subject to the following conditions. And the seven are outlined there. The first two have to do with the requirements of Newfoundland Power and St. John's Regional Fire Department, final approval of the June 1st, 2010 drawing submission by Engineering Service Division, Government Services Center approval, inspection and planning service requirements, and of <coughs> course that the development meet the City of Mount Pearl Development Regulations and Light Industrial Land Use Zone Development Standards. And I so move. Moved by the Deputy Mayor, seconded by Councillor Aker. Just as an observation, it is interesting that we are dealing with an issue surrounding St. John Ambulance and the request for increased funding mm -hmm. for 2010 and a new, we welcome them to a new memorandum <laughs> of understanding. We welcome uh, everyone And I Mount see Pearl. the chair of the Community Services Committee, Mr. Walsh, has got his Cheshire cat smile on because <laughs> we're going to give them a new building. So yeah. here they come. Yep. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded. Motion is carried. I think, I think we're going to. Take great pleasure in welcoming St. John Ambulance to a new facility in Indeed. Mount Indeed. Speaking of developments, the next one, Your Worship, is uh, uh, pertaining to the Hillside Subdivision Development, Phase 1A, and that's uh, Synergy Executive Properties. Our committee was advised that the Synergy Executive Properties has returned the signed Subdivision Development Agreement for the Hillside Subdivision Development, again, Phase uh, 1A. Uh, the terms of the Subdivision Development Agreement are in accordance with the Council's decision with respect to the subdivision, the usual subdivision development standards and conditions of the City of Mount Pearl Municipal Plan and our development regulations are, are met, and also they incorporate uh, 
the specific requirements of the City's Planning and Development Department and Engineering Services Division. As such, the Planning and Land Use Development Committee is recommending approval for the final signature and the execution of the Hillside Subdivision Development Phase 1A Subdivision Development Agreement, and I so move. It has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Contrary minded, motion carried. And the next item here, Your Worship, is the development permit list for the time period of May 15th to June 11, 2010. We have uh, uh, six permits here, three of which is interesting to note that are home based businesses. Uh, and I move that these be accepted as presented. Move the development permit list. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Contrary minded. Motion is carried. And the last item here, Your Worship, are the residential and commercial building construction permits for the time period of May 29th to June 11th, 2010. And during this time period, our residential construction permits uh, totaled $352,500. Uh, commercial uh, permits during the same time period valued $1,251,000, bringing the total for this time period to $1,603,500. And I move that these amounts be accepted as presented. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded, motion is carried. And that is it, Your Worship. Thank you. And that concludes planning uh, committee. That concludes committee reports. We'll move on then to new business. Last week we started on the right. This week we'll start on the left. Councillor Tessier, if you would. Thank you, Your Worship. Just uh, two items. Uh, the Blunden Contest is a contest, uh, I guess it's facilitated by Memorial University, and it's a provincial senior high math contest, and it's recognized as a very prestigious award, this Blunden Contest is. Yeah. Uh, and this year passed, or this, this, this current year's winner, happens to be one of our own. It's a, it's a resident from Mount Pearl. And if you haven't gotten tired of writing letters of congratulations to him, I wonder if you would do it again for Mr. Brian Peach. He has he won, won this award. He's won the math thing, too, on top of everything else. He's won the math thing. They recognize it. Kid? They recognize it as their most important provincial senior high mathematical contest wow. in the province. And he's, he's the grand winner this year. So uh, it should also be noted that Brian, Brian is... For everybody's, for everybody's benefit, Brian is, of course, the son of the director of our corporate services. Don't know where he gets his math who's a big genius. Award, who's a big award winner herself. Who's a big award winner year. herself. The Peach gosh. family is doing real well. Uh, we're I, see. Wonder, I wonder uh, how Hubby is doing. He must, he must feel like he's being just run over here. No, he's taking credit for Brian. He's taking credit for the Brian. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to see, see the Peach household come through on our permit list because they're going to need to build an extension on for all their awards. For all of their awards. <laughs> well, we, we'll, uh, we'll certainly write a letter of congratulations. Absolutely. Appreciate it, Your Worship. Well done. You've got to be proud of them, Michelle. Oh, yes. Um, also, one last item. Uh, we say in Newfoundland there are two seasons, winter and construction season. Mm -hmm. And we're heavy into construction season now. Uh, I know Commonwealth Avenue Bridge is now, uh, being, is now under construction. There's several areas in the region, in, this, in our city as well. I want to encourage residents to slow down, to give themselves some extra time, because our children are also being released from school this week, much to the ch chagrin of some parents. <laughs> I might happen to be one of them. Uh, but we've, we've been hearing an awful lot about tragedy in our, in our news stories as of late, and we really want to not see that happen. So I'd encourage residents to give themselves some extra time so that they have patience. They can exercise the patience that they need in these construction areas so that they're not late for work or commitments wherever they need to be. And they also are cognizant that our children are on the streets again, uh, which is our most important resource. So again, I'd encourage residents to give themselves lots of time to get through these areas and to slow down. Thank you. I would say, yeah, we have a lot of, a lot of construction areas happening to all of the entrances to the city. There's the bridge. Then there's the piece going up Mount Carson. That'll start pretty soon. There's the, the finishing of the paving and whatnot for Park Avenue. Yep. That's got to happen. There's the installation of the lights and the expansion of Bruce Street mm -hmm. in Dunham's, another major entrance to the city. That's got to happen. Pretty soon you won't be able to get in or out. That'll be really interesting. I'm going to love being <laughs> the guy in charge of that kind of monstrosity That's when it happens. Isn't <laughs> Isn't the, the overpass in by Paradise, isn't there construction happening there this year as well? Uh, yeah, I wasn't going to bring that one up. Let's give, let, let's give people, leave them some hope. Be scared, be scared, <laughs> afraid. Short term. But again, but again, that just goes right back to the point. People need to give themselves extra time and they need to exercise patience and caution. Your warning is well accepted because that really is the case. And yes, it's all in the name of progress. It's all good. Deputy Mayor Locke. Uh, your Worship. Uh, we made reference to this uh, 
earlier on the torch run uh, relay for the Special Olympics. Uh, again, this past Friday, I had the uh, pleasure to um, uh, bring greetings on behalf of Council and uh, provide a, a donation toward the cause. And uh, Councillor Walsh spoke to the volunteerism and the small army of volunteers that they have. Uh, and again, I just wanted to extend a thank you to our staff. Uh, quite, a, quite a number of staff were out to welcome these people. And uh, I mean, I think they jogged in total 21 kilometers that day. Mm -hmm. And I know um, uh, after the ceremony here, I was driving up uh, Commonwealth Avenue and I saw these, these guys jogging up uh, both Commonwealth and then steering at Mount Carson Avenue. And uh, you know, God love them, they, uh, they stuck to it and made their final destination out to uh, Kelsey Drive, the Walmart out there. So uh, it, was, it was a great honor That's to be able to do run, that. I want to tell Holy you. cow, after, after all their jogs that morning. So yeah. my hat went off to them as well. Here, here. Um, another thing, I brought this up uh, at a previous meeting, but I've spoken to some, some people again. Uh, and it has to do with the, the intersection up by our Reed Community Center where Smallwood intersects Old Placentia. And in the turning lanes again, I just, I just wanna, I wanna reiterate that. Uh, the number of near misses that I've seen at the intersection because when you're in the turning lane to turn left in both cases, the way the road is aligned, you, you, can't, see, you can't see the other two lanes. Uh, lanes. Yeah. And many people are creeping out, creeping out, and they're taking, they're taking a risk of doing that. So I, you know, I'd, uh, you know, encourage people one to take caution. But I'm just wondering if we can't, as we're redesigning that intersection, if we can't look at that somehow, where where you got a little more view of the of the oncoming traffic. I don't know if that's possible, it's but it's only going to get busier. Thursday. Pardon me. It's only going to get busier. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I just just want to know if we could, you know, again, yeah. I throw that out there, probably take it back to committee and uh, and have a yeah, look at that. That would be something for the engineering committee to look yes. at. Yes. Okay. And the last thing, and I know I've said this several times. So I want to take the opportunity, since uh, our friends from Rogers are here today, speaking of all the construction that is ongoing, uh, not only in terms of our infrastructure, but also in residential properties, and uh, any of us who bike ride or walk the pathways, uh, again, the number of people that are deciding when they're repairing their fence to deposit their construction debris out in our pathways, and uh, they treat this you know, as their, their own dumping grounds, and you know, it's just not acceptable. And I know that our staff have been taking measures to uh, approach people and remind them that they should uh, uh, dispose mm -hmm. of these materials in, in another fashion. But uh, it's not as visible now because the foliage is starting to thicken up in the area, but you can see the um, amount of debris, old fences, fence posts, the concrete slabs that are just thrown over people's backyards uh, into, uh, into our pathway. So again, just to encourage people to, to take ownership for our fine city, we're known for our parks and, and trailways, and our staff do a, a great job to keep keep the city clean, but uh, it takes the cooperation of everyone in the city to do that. So again, I just want to put that out to your worship. Thank you, okay. uh, Deputy Mayor, Thank you. Uh, very much. Councillor Stoyles, any new business? Yes, I do, your worship, a couple of things. First, I want to mention a guest we have in our uh, uh, gallery today. Dawn Chaplin is here. She's the CEO of the town of Torbay, and she came along to observe our council meeting today. And Did we bore you, Don? Just wanted to just What? Wanted just to like at home? Well, she's a Mount Portland. Just wanted to say welcome to Don and hope she got some good information. Actually, uh, we received a community profile last week and what a great job they had done. They did, yep. Profile. We were looking at it and admiring it, so great job to Torbay. And I know Peggy Roach and is a good friend of mine down in Torbay, and I yeah, want to wish you well with your upcoming events and that over the summer because they have a lot of festivals and that on the go this summer. The next thing I wanted to mention, Your Worship, uh, on Thursday of last week, I hosted the Girl Guides, the first Mount Pearl uh, Guardian from Morris Academy, and they had given me a nice little bag, shopping bag, to pass along to you. Wanda Taylor, of course, was here as one of the leaders, and this is a little souvenir oh, thank you. for you, and to thank us for, in Mount Pearl for letting them come down. They had a tour of the facility. And, Blue uh, but green. Mona Lewis yes. certainly laid out some goodies and some pencils and things like that for them, and they wanted to pass along. Thank they you to it. the city. Very and nice. They did enjoy yeah. coming and taking over the mayor's chair and they were up in your office. I even had a note pictures. left uh, <laughs> uh, 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 on, on the desk, actually. That's right. They left a note in your office yep. letting you know that they were there. Which and, was nice. Yeah. It, was, oh. it was nice for us. And, and any group that wants to come in, we certainly welcome them to come Thank in. You, and you know, different councillors certainly take turns and giving to us net, and I was certainly honoured and pleased to be there to her at the one last week. Also, Your Worship, uh, I wanted to pass on to the staff at the Reed Centre. 
On Sunday of last week, there was three different walks at the Reed Centre. The Rick Hansen Wheels in Motion was supposed to take place outside, and of course, because the weather was bad, a lot of people in wheelchairs, they done it inside in the, in the Reed Centre. And of course, the ALS walk and the Lupus walk, three of them was on the one day, at the exact same time. So heads off to the staff because they certainly uh, did an excellent job trying to look after and help each of the groups out and it was a, a great, uh, you know, They did a good, good job or keeping it organized? I tell you, it was great to see the That's staff good. up there helping out and uh, Councillor Aiko was up there on behalf and representative council at ALS and of course mm -hmm. I represent council at the other events and it was great to see the city you know, being involved in those walks and that they took place in Mount Pearl. Here, here. Tomorrow night is the last meeting for the Joint Councils, the Northeast Devon Joint Councils meeting in St. John's, and it's tomorrow night, it's the annual barbecue, and anybody, if they want to go, they have to inform uh, Maureen Harvey and, and let us know <coughs> if they want to go, and as I said, tomorrow night is basically last night. And that's it for me, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor Stoyle, <coughs> for that. Uh, we do have representations attending that tomorrow night, right? I'm going to be attending that. Okay, good. Good. Councillor Walsh. Thank you very much. You forgot to mention, uh, Councillor Stalls, that Don is actually uh, a resident, or was a resident, grew up in Mount Pearl. Yeah, I know. I and of course, we know Don well, and uh, welcome, uh, Don. Uh, obviously, Torbay is a very progressive uh, town, and you're doing a great job there, so welcome anytime back to the city of Mount Pearl. A um, couple of things, Your Worship. Uh, first of all, uh, on behalf of Council, I'd like to extend uh, uh, our, our condolences to the O'Keefe family, as you are well aware. Uh, Doc's uh, brother, uh, Walter, passed away, and this is a difficult time for the entire family, particularly Walter's family. I understand I didn't know Walter, but I do know, and all of us know, many members of the O'Keefe family. Uh, they are a tremendous family and a very community-minded family. Uh, Walter was no different in that regard, and so uh, just extend our, our uh, condolences to the entire family. Uh, you don't have to dig very deep, unfortunately, to find bad news or sad news. Uh, last week, one of our students, Colton Mitchum, uh, uh, met with a, a very untimely death, uh, and the entire community grieved and mourned his loss. He was a student of, of O'Donnell High School. Uh, I know uh, that his friends, obviously, are still grieving. And they're trying to put together some way, some suitable way, uh, symbolic and otherwise, to actually honor his memory. We as a council and as a committee of community service are trying to work with some of the young people whom I think Deputy Mayor Locke are actually in the works raising some money for a, a, a memorial plaque. And I just want to, to say to this group and to the Mitchum family, I, I didn't know Colton. I've been long since gone from O'Donnell and I didn't know his family, but I, I do know that we all shared in, in, in the grief of the loss. We will be working with this group uh, to try to mount and help in whatever way we can, uh, some sort of commemorative plaque for Colton. I think that what they're looking for is the location at the skate park. He, he was apparently uh, you know, very passionate skater, uh, very involved in that, and, and uh, we, we certainly, uh, again, extend condolences uh, to the family. On a brighter uh, note, that is something we can do, though, I think. Absolutely, I think we, we, we can, can and we will, Your Worship. It's just a matter of how, of, we, yeah, of how we, how we do, uh, go about doing that. And we'll work with some of his friends to make sure that it is a suitable, uh, you know, uh, to his memory. Um, I do want to extend uh, best wishes and congratulations to a good friend of mine, Mike Sutton, who this year is retiring as principal of O'Donnell High School. Mike is going to be sadly missed by the staff there. He's an exceptional gentleman and uh, a, a a visionary educator. He's one of these guys who just kind of rolls up the sleeves and, and gets at it. Uh, he's going to be finishing his education career, and I'm sure he's probably with, with uh, mixed feelings. He's happy to, to be moving on to a new stage in his life, <coughs> but it's always very difficult and sad to leave. So he is going to be a loss not just to the, to the students, to the staff, but to the entire community, and to this community. So Absolutely. I'd ask if you would, uh, Your Worship, if you take uh, the time to write him a letter uh, under your signature. Uh, extending our appreciation and extending him best wishes for the I future. Would be, uh, I would be honored to do that on behalf of Council. Mr. Sutton is well known to this group here. Uh, you use the term visionary educator. I think that's very true. Uh, he, is a, he was a tremendous, and still is, uh, a tremendous mentor to the young people of this community, and uh, he deserves uh, our appreciation. 
and our thanks. And by the way, we also should like, you know, really suck him into doing some other good stuff. Sure. Now that he's retired, you know? Absolutely. He has lots of time on his hands, although knowing him, I don't think there, <laughs> that I don't think there'll be, be a whole lot of grass growing underneath no, his feet. I don't think so. That he's won't be the case. He's no. going to be pretty busy. Yeah. Uh, this coming Saturday, Your Worship, uh, there is um, uh, an event taking place at the Reed Center to celebrate the life and memory of Jennifer Lithgow. Uh, Jennifer's family, of course, we know well, mm -hmm. and we knew Jennifer very well. Uh, just uh, extending an invitation to one and all. We're probably going to have to build on to the Reed Center. That's probably going to be the biggest challenge because I think uh, the Lithgow family is very well known, very well respected. I don't think I ever attended a funeral, uh, either mass or wake, that was busier. Uh, it was incredible. So as part of her birthday, actually, I think, and also corresponding with Father's Day, they're having a, an event to celebrate her life and memory. So uh, one and all are invited to come along. Uh, so uh, finally, uh, as a member of the Regional Water Committee, Your Worship, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we got together and put out a combined press release. We are, I think, being very, very proactive as a regional water committee to try to ensure that we put whatever is reasonable uh, to put in place uh, to avoid water bans uh, and the like. Uh, we suffered a lot of grief last year, perhaps some of it well-deserved, so we tried to change the way we do business as a regional committee. We did strike a technical committee, which has representation from all of the various communities that are served by the regional water uh, supply at Babel's Big Pond. Uh, the last reading that I received was just a few days ago, and the pond was still at 36 feet, which is really healthy. To put that in perspective, last year when we had the ban, I think the pond level went as low as 22 feet. Mm -hmm. uh, 14 feet of water uh, is a big difference. So I'm optimistic, we're all optimistic, we're all hopeful, that we can avoid uh, a water ban this year entirely. In fact, it seems to be very much uh, going in that direction. However, it's really incumbent on all of us to ensure that, you know, that we don't take this for granted. We're beginning slowly, slowly beginning, and the price has been high, and not to take water for granted. It's not only uh, not free, it's very expensive. Uh, and of course, uh, it, we have a plentiful supply, but the problem is, of course, the cost of bringing water services or extending new supplies. It is extremely, extremely expensive. Um, we do have our ongoing conservation order in place, Your Worship. Uh, I just want to remind people that uh, civic numbers that are even, in other words, if your house number is an even number, you have four hours uh, to water your lawn from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. and again in the evening from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, that's if your civic number is uh, even, that's Wednesdays and Saturdays. Um, if your civic number is odd, uh, it's Wednesday, sorry, Wednesdays and Sundays, same time, four hours a day. Um, you can hand water your flowers, shrubs, trees, plants, any time at all uh, during uh, the conservation order. And this conservation order, Your Worship, is in effect all year long. This is not something that's just in the summer. It's no. just that we get recurring calls in the summertime about, about it, yeah. what we can do, and what we can't do, and, and the like. Uh, same thing with uh, washing your car or cleaning your siding. As long as you have either a, you know, a hose with a nozzle, of course all these pressure washers have uh, nozzles, so it's not a problem. Don't want to get into penalties, but there are penalties. What we want is cooperation and understanding uh, and support. Um, we don't want to have to be giving people tickets for 100 or 200 or 250 dollars. What we need is a you know a greater degree of cooperation and understanding all year long, so we can avoid the business of, of bans and uh, and take care of our water supply. Sure. So I'd like to get that message out and uh, thank you for the opportunity for doing that. Thank you for that, Councillor Walsh, <laughs> Councillor Aker. Thank you, Worship. Uh, this coming Saturday and Sunday, Mount Pro Soccer Association hosting down at the International Soccer Pitch at Team Gushu. Uh, it's a festival called CBC Soccer Nation Festival. And basically, it's a family-oriented inter interactive event where participants can test their soccer skills, take part in drills with the pros, watch free starters showcase their talents, and festival go goers can even take a shot at being a CBC sports broadcaster by calling a World Cup play behind a real CBC broadcast desk. Of course, the World Cup of Soccer is taking place right now in South, uh, South Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd like to invite council to come on down and uh, maybe bring your cleats and kick the ball around. And of course, all residents of the community are more than welcome to come down to and participate in the great game of soccer. Um, I should note, too, that uh, CBC Soccer Nation is sponsored by CIBC, Chevrolet, and our good friends from Rogers who are doing the telecast here today. Awesome. Thank you.
It starts early in the morning, um, 10 o'clock on Saturday, 10 to 5 both days. Not early. <laughs> Talk to my teenagers. That's all I have, Your Worship. Thank you. That's early. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, that concludes the business of council. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. It is moved by Councillor Tessier. We stand adjourned.